Assessing the worth of a property serves a pivotal role in numerous aspects such as securing financing, creating sales listings, conducting investment evaluations, ensuring property insurance coverage, and addressing tax considerations. Nevertheless, for the majority, establishing the ideal selling or acquisition price for a real estate asset stands out as the most practical application of real estate valuation. In this video, we'll embark on a journey to acquaint you with the fundamental principles and techniques of real estate appraisal, with a specific focus on its relevance in sales transactions. Basic Valuation Concepts In technical terms, the value of a property can be defined as the current worth of future advantages derived from owning that property. Unlike many consumer goods that are swiftly consumed, real estate's benefits typically unfold over an extended period. Consequently, determining the value of property necessitates a comprehensive examination of economic and societal trends, as well as governmental regulations and environmental factors that could impact the four crucial facets of value. Demand, this pertains to the desire or necessity for property ownership, substantiated by the financial capacity to fulfill that desire. Utility, it encompasses the property's ability to meet the desires and needs of future owners. Scarcity, this aspect centers on the finite supply of comparable properties in the market. Transferability, this refers to the ease with which ownership rights can be transferred. But before we delve further into this intriguing world of property valuation, be sure to subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll stay up to date with our latest videos, ensuring that you're continuously informed and prepared for smart real estate investments. Value versus Cost and Price It's crucial to understand that value is not synonymous with either cost or price. Cost pertains to the real expenses incurred, such as those for materials or labor. Conversely, price reflects the sum someone is willing to pay for a particular item. While cost and price can indeed have an impact on value, they do not dictate it. Take, for instance, the sale of a house with a price tag of $150,000. However, the actual value of this property may significantly differ from that price. Suppose the new owner uncovers a significant flaw, like a faulty foundation. In that case, the house's value could dip well below the price initially set. Understanding these nuances is vital for making shrewd real estate investments. Market Value An appraisal serves as an informed judgment or assessment of the value of a specific property, pinpointed to a precise date. These appraisal reports find utility among a diverse range of stakeholders, including businesses, governmental bodies, individuals, investors, and mortgage firms. They are a pivotal tool in the decision-making process for real estate transactions. The primary objective of an appraisal is to ascertain a property's market value, which is the most plausible price the property is anticipated to fetch in a competitive and transparent market. It's worth noting that market price, the actual amount at which a property exchanges hands, may not always mirror the property's market value. Factors such as a seller in a distressed situation due to foreclosure threats or private sales can result in a property changing hands for less than its true market value. Understanding these dynamics is critical in the realm of real estate investments. Appraisal Methods The precision of an appraisal hinges on the systematic gathering of data. This data encompasses both the specific information about the property itself and the broader data related to the country, region, city, and neighborhood in which the property resides. These data points are meticulously collected and scrutinized to derive a well-informed valuation. In the realm of appraisals, three fundamental methods come into play to gauge a property's worth. Method 1. Sales Comparison Approach The sales comparison approach, often referred to as the market data approach, is a widely employed method for appraising single-family homes and land. This approach establishes a property's value by scrutinizing recently sold properties that share similar characteristics, also known as comparables. To ensure a valid comparison, these comparables must meet specific criteria. 
Similarity, they should closely resemble the subject property. Recency, they must have been sold within the past year within an open and competitive market. Typical conditions, sales should have occurred under standard market circumstances. In the appraisal process, it's customary to utilize at least three or four comparables. The key considerations when selecting these comparables include size, similar features, and notably, location, which can exert a significant influence on a property's market value. These comparables are not identical to the subject property, so adjustments are made to account for differing features and other variables affecting value, such as Building age and condition Sale date, particularly if economic changes occurred between the sale date of a comparable and the appraisal date. Sale terms and conditions, like distressed sales or transactions between relatives at reduced prices. Location disparities, as property values can vary between neighborhoods. Physical attributes, including lot size, landscaping, construction type and quality, room count, square footage, amenities like a garage, upgraded kitchen, fireplace, pool, central air, and more. The market value estimate for the subject property falls within the range formed by adjusting the sales prices of these comparables. As some adjustments are more subjective than others, more weight is typically assigned to comparables with fewer adjustments. This comprehensive approach ensures a well-informed valuation of the property. Method 2, Cost Approach The cost approach is a valuable method for estimating the worth of properties featuring one or more constructed buildings. This approach entails separate valuations for the buildings and the land, factoring in any depreciation. These valuations are then aggregated to determine the overall value of the improved property. The foundation of the cost approach is the assumption that a rational buyer would not pay more for an existing improved property than the cost of purchasing a comparable plot of land and erecting a similar structure. It proves particularly useful for properties that are infrequently sold and do not generate income, including institutions such as schools, churches, hospitals, and government buildings. Assessing building costs can be accomplished through several methods, such as the square foot approach, where the cost per square foot of a recently constructed comparable is multiplied by the subject building's square footage. The unit in place method estimates costs based on the construction cost per unit of measure for individual building components, encompassing both labor and materials. Alternatively, the quantity survey method estimates the quantities of raw materials required to replace the subject building, factoring in current material prices and associated installation costs. Depreciation, in the context of appraisal, encompasses any factors that diminish the value of an improvement to real property. It takes into account Physical deterioration, this includes both remediable deterioration like paint or roof replacement and irreparable issues like structural defects. Functional obsolescence, refers to features that are no longer considered desirable by property owners, such as outdated appliances or homes with an unusual imbalance of bedrooms and bathrooms. Economic obsolescence, caused by external factors, such as proximity to a noisy airport or polluting factory. Here's the methodology applied. Determine the land's value as if it were vacant and accessible for its highest and best use, using the sales comparison approach, as land doesn't depreciate. Calculate the current construction costs for the buildings and site improvements. Estimate depreciation for the improvements, encompassing deterioration, and functional, and economic obsolescence. Deduct the depreciation from the estimated construction costs. Add the estimated land value to the depreciated cost of the buildings and site improvements to ascertain the property's overall value. Method 3, Income Capitalization Approach. The income approach, often referred to as the income capitalization approach, is rooted in the correlation between an investor's expected rate of return and the net income generated by a property. This method is employed to gauge the worth of income-generating properties, such as apartment complexes, office buildings, and shopping centers. When the subject property is poised to yield future income, and its expenses are steady and foreseeable, 
appraisals using the income capitalization approach become relatively straightforward. Direct Capitalization When utilizing the direct capitalization approach, appraisers follow these key steps. Estimate potential gross income annually. This involves determining the property's anticipated annual revenue. Factor in vacancy and rent collection losses to arrive at the effective gross income after accounting for vacancies and rent collection losses. Subtract annual operating expenses to calculate the annual net operating income. Determine the capitalization rate. This rate represents what a typical investor might pay for the income generated by a specific type and class of property. Apply the capitalization rate, this is done to the property's annual net operating income, resulting in an estimate of the property's value. Gross Income Multipliers The Gross Income Multiplier GIM, method finds use in assessing properties that are not typically acquired for income purposes but have the potential to be rented, such as single-family homes. The GIM technique relates a property's sales price to its expected rental income. For residential properties, the gross monthly income is the usual metric, while commercial and industrial properties employ the gross annual income. The calculation of the gross income multiplier involves Sales price divided by rental income equals gross income multiplier. To establish an accurate GIM, recent sales and rental data from a minimum of three similar properties are considered. The GIM is then applied to the subject property's estimated fair market rental value, determining its market worth through the following equation. Rental income x GIM equals estimated market value. Precise real estate valuation plays a pivotal role in the realms of mortgage lending, investment, insurance, and the buying and selling of real estate. While the task of appraising is typically entrusted to seasoned experts, Individuals engaged in real estate transactions can derive immense value from developing a fundamental grasp of the diverse approaches to valuing real property. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of real estate valuation and appraisal methods. We hope you found this information enlightening and valuable for your real estate endeavors. If you are interested in learning more about when to invest in real estate, simply click on the video displayed on your screen. It's a great resource to further expand your knowledge and make informed decisions in the world of real estate investments.